Hello everyone, I'm Andy Davo. Uh, if you want to get better at low team value Blood Bowl, watch this video. Uh, this video is going to be a first game of Chaos versus a fresh Dark Elf team. Um, and we're going to play them from the beginning. This is the Champion Ladder Season 34 um, run that I put together. Um, and we'll watch it um, from the Chaos perspective, which is me uh, attacking Dark Elves in the first half. Um, a couple of things you want to go through before we start watching the video. Uh, number one, we stream on Twitch live every Tuesday evening, Saturday evening and Sunday evening. So if you want to come and catch us live and talk to me uh, or my co-caster Zunk, uh, tune into twitch.tv um, from 7 o'clock on any of those evenings. Um, also, uh, it's worth uh, pointing out that for subscribers to the channel, we give away free uh, tabletop miniatures. That's a Dark Elf miniature for 12 months of subscription, uh, which is a little mini me. Uh, and for 24 months, we give away a free Grebo Games um, Human Ogre, which looks very much like my co-caster Zunk. Uh, and the final thing is, if you want to stay up to date with the latest 2020 Blood Bowl release information uh, and or Blood Bowl 3, then um, make sure you leave it like, subscribe uh, and ring the bell icon so you don't miss any other information that comes out on this channel. I do suspect we're going to be able to drop some more 2020 information at you uh, over the next couple of weeks. So, anyway, all that housekeeping's done. Uh, welcome to the first video, or the first run of this team. Um, as I said, it's two completely fresh teams uh, going at it. Um, and I'll be honest, as this is a uh, sort of a preview, uh, a review of what actually happened, the start of this game doesn't go very well. And we try and try and struggle against adversity. Um, and it's in, uh, I'm looking at it from my point of view to try and work out, could I have done something a bit better? Were the dice actually horrible? Or did I need to do something different? So, um, while I'm setting up, the first thing I'm thinking through is, what's the goal for the half? What do I want to achieve? Um, and how? Wh what players do I need to sort of concentrate on in his point of view? So, um, I'm start setting up thinking, right, I want to score on turn eight. That's my goal for the half. So, all I need to do in turn one is try and go and secure the ball. Um, throw the line in scrimmage blocks uh, and generally try and protect a little bit against the blitz. They're my goals. So let's assume that this is my final setup. Have I um, have I achieved that? Well, um, he's set up very aggressively. So if he gets a blitz and the ball comes in this quadrant over here, he's going to have a maximum of four players. Um, not a lot I can do to stop him other than bring this guy forward, but that gives me no ball, ball collection. Um, and on the other side, it's a little bit stronger um, as I've got two players in the flank. Maybe this guy could go here. Um, to shut out the fact that he can try and run through. So maybe that guy should have gone there. And then maybe actually I could put that guy there and then just have one guy for collecting the ball. So I think I can learn something here. Or maybe the the, the, uh, the shutout is not quite as strong as it should be. Uh, luckily though, we don't see a blitz come off. Um, and I can start looking at my blocks. Um, first thing to do is because we've got a new single guy over here, we need to go and just screen the ball a little bit because otherwise he could bring a player in here, base, blitz, blitz through, and then three players could come and then be bothering the ball. Um, so second block, we hit a one in nine. Now that means that I've got to be really careful now um, because no reroll for the rest of the turn. Ideally, I think this guy should have come slightly wider. Um, we don't want people flooding around the side. This is risk mitigation. So yeah, see, I've thrown the three dice block and then covered. Really, I should have covered first. No follow. Now it's fetch the ball. Um, and if we put the ball somewhere there, we've got a bit of a safety net. Um, and then the blitz is on. Oh, the, I think the blitz should have been there. I think the blitz should have been there because it was three dice. It was already set up for three dice. Um, and we rolled the school both down. We don't know what the third block dice would have been, but it didn't have block. So at least we were both turned over rather than stunning myself. I think that blitz was actually a little bit greedy. Um, the reason that blitz was that blitz was because at the start I said we need to try and think about what players on his team do we need to deal with. Well, it's the three blitzes and the witch elf. Um, no one's got an apothecary, so if you can chin something, if we can take out something of his with block, um, then that would be a lot stronger. So he's blitzing the block, so you would assume that he knows what he's doing. That's great. Um, and he's trying to start to overload the wall carrier. Now, let's watch this because... Um, you just look there. I always look for these things. A T-shape here. So we've got a T-shape with these three players in here. Uh, or we've got a box. Um, and 
while they are in real in real time when I was watching through this, I was thinking, oh, we might be able to get a surf here because the eagle line amongst you will have noticed that if you can blitz from one of these squares here, we can push into the guy that's got the blitz icon over his head, push into this guy who can go there and we can surf. So there's a free surf on the table here. Okay, so not terrible, but one of the very first things we should be doing this turn is trying to surf this because the uh, value, oh dear. Oh dear, so that was a 1%, a oh dear. So that was a 1% hit, because it's a 1 in 81, um, where it went wrong. And I'm going to pause it for a second, because I want to actually look and see if there was anything else we should have done first. So we hit a 1%. We hit a 1%. Into that 1%, we then had our arm broken. In the arm break, we then had our KO. So you're probably looking at 1 in a couple of hundred um, as what just happened there. So you can say, genuinely, was that unlucky? Yes, it was. Um, were there any of the dice thrown beforehand? No, there were not. So you couldn't avoid and mitigate that. I couldn't make it three dice. It was the right thing to do. Um, we needed to do something. Yeah, the only other play was to blitz with the ball carrier. So you, and that would have turned over even being even worse. So I think objectively that is the, that is the right thing to do. Um, we've obviously got two players free here. So the only thing you can then say is where those players, what should I have done with those players? So would bringing the Beastman back here um, in some way, yeah, or being just somewhere here to try and limit the two dice av availability uh, be a thing. Maybe. Um, however, what's going to happen is he should bring this guy in. Uh, sorry, he should block. No. Start again. Bring this guy in here. He can block there. Um, and then he can come around and blitz. Or um, he is just going to bring this guy in, block on the diagonal here with block, and then two dice blitz. Um, and then get more way, loads more dice that way. Um, so there's, there's no way I'm going to be holding the ball at the end of this turn. Um, and I think I'd say that's unlucky. It's genuinely just unlucky. Um, it's also very swingy because we've lost the strength four player. Um, and that's a problem. Now that's, um, that's bold. That was, um, that was into one dice. Um, and considering we've just failed the 1% out, I think that's a, it's a little unfortunate. Um, I think you want to be making that two dice into two dice. This makes a lot of sense. Two dice block with block. Um, and that should then unlock standing someone here. And that's a 75% play, so that's reasonable. Now we need to go and put someone in here. And then we need to block on the diagonal here with block. We still haven't used our blitz, so that's totally, totally legitimate. There we go. That's a bad scatter for him, because it's gone into two tackle zones. But he has still got the blitz. So I'd be blitzing someone onto the ball here. Uh, this guy should have been, these guys should have swapped, and I'd blitz onto the ball uh, because then it can't be it can't be in a worse square. It's or it's in two tackle zones. You can't make it in more than two tackle zones. And because he's throwing the reroll at it, he's failed. Okay, so next turn, I want to just pause this because um, this this half at the start of the half is riddled uh, with turnovers from my point of view. So what I'm looking for from my side is what could I have done better than I actually did do to try and make this um, out outcome a bit better. So stand this guy up. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. This guy in the middle of the three needs to stand up. Um, and this Chaos Warrior over here needs to stand up. Where can the Chaos Warrior get to? Well, he could get there for a free two dice block. Reasonable. Or he can go there and I can potentially give away a two dice block, but at least he's available to move around. Um, I think I probably need him more than just throwing a two dice block. So I think he should go there and just get closer to the ball. Um, we then assess the board state. What are we trying to achieve? Well, um, it'd be dangerous to blitz onto the ball because it could go in one of these two tackle zones. Um, and with a double stun, I can't really get away from it. So I think, I think the blitz has got to be this guy uh, here that I'm highlighting just there. And then um, we need to create tackle zones around the ball. Um, and that can be the block. Well, let's see what I actually do. Standing up, standing up. Blitz. Another one in nine. My word. I've gone onto the ball and I have looked out a little bit there um, and the ball has come my way. Um, didn't stand that up, that should have been done first. And I get why that was not stood up because we don't know where the ball was going. So that one I get away with. I think there's a justification for it. That one, no, that was terrible. That was just a flat mistake. Um, and then you're one dicing here for no good reason. 
Okay, so not ideal. Um, we're basically with three players down in that turn. So we had two, KO, two stuns and a KO. Um, what he should be looking to do is blitz onto the ball here. Because it's in three tackle zones and it can't get any better. Sorry, it can't get any worse. Um, he could try and do what he's, he's, he's clearly trying to do here, uh, which is just blocking people off, uh, off the ball. He could have put this guy here to attempt this, but I don't think that's the best place. Okay, and then all we need to do is bring this guy in here, block there, and the witch elf can then pick up the ball, um, and away she goes. And in fact, um, just for op op optimization here, lineman goes in and picks ball up, hands it to witch elf, which elf is there at the end of the turn. So he chooses not to re-roll it. I guess he's saving his re-roll. Nothing wrong with that. But I would have sent the lineman in. Okay, so what do we need to do now? Um, we are struggling again. Um, get rid of the turn marker. Um, what, what is our objective? What is our goal? Well, our goal is to try and secure the ball. We're still playing to our goal and objective, which is trying to score on turn eight. So I don't actually need to panic too much at this point, um, other than the drive is starting to go wrong. Um, we need to apply loads of tackle zones. He's only got one reroll. Let's try and think, how can we make this a pain for him to have to deal with? Um, now, we can clear two of these tackle zones off um, because we could chain push someone. Notice there's a T-shape available here. There's a, so there's a box, but we can't use the box because the ball's there. But this guy could stand up and walk there. That gives us a T-shape and the Chaos Warrior could blitz there. That would then leave us a Chaos Warrior on the ball, a, a stood up guy, these guys can stand up um, and then maybe this guy can loop around the top to try and limit the number of two dice blocks. So not a, all is not lost, although we are on no re-rolls. We are on no re-rolls. So stand up, walk forward, stand up, stand up, stand up. Blitz because it's the most important blitz ac yeah, action we're going to do this turn. Block there and walk round. And I think that's the turn ordering. And the goal here is don't give up. Keep going. The dice have gone wrong. The dice have been right mean, nasty so-and-sos. Um, but if you don't let your head drop too much. See, that's the wrong order. That was the wrong order. Um, then you might get away with it. Yeah, that was definitely the wrong order. So the reason that was that was the wrong order there, because this is the most important thing. So when you've got no rerolls, you need to be going and looking at the most important action first. Unless... A cheeky 2 plus action um, is 2 plus now and is 4 plus later in the turn. That's not the case here, and I admit I've misplayed that. I got I got bad luck, but I did misplay it. And I think I think it's important to call it out. When I do misplay it, I'm, I want to call it out. Okay, so we could we could easily go 1-0 down here. Um, all he needs to do is clear or we'll block there. Blitz there and hand the ball off to the Witch Elf. And he's got another turn of getting out of it. So that's the second turn in a row. He should be able to get out of this. But he does unfortunately choose to pick the ball up. Um, and by picking the ball up, it means I know where the ball is next turn. So I think that's some... Yeah, if I'm pulling out his my misplays, I think I can call out his misplays. Um, and um, Lord BT there. If he'd have chose to give the ball to the Witch Elf, um, Witch Elf could be somewhere down here. Um, I, could, I could be 1-0 down. Very bold one dice. So, start turn five. Let's just do a quick assessment. What, what's the goal this turn? The goal this turn is to get the ball back. Okay, what can we do? Um, is there any two dice blocks on the ball? Um, or what, what are we looking at? So, how can we minimize our risk? How can we minimize our strat um, minimize our failure state? Um, so, let's do all our free moves first, which is stand everyone up because they're not going to go anywhere. They're not going to be dodging. And actually, a lot of the cases, depending on if we can get the ball on the floor, that's just added a tackle zone onto an elf catching the ball. So stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Um, next thing, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a go for it to blitz for two dice. I can't make it any better than that because everything else is a dodge. So it's got to be that, and that has got to be the first move because that lim uh, reduces the amount of failure state uh, or the chances of things going wrong. So over to me. Can I get the right? Can I get my turn or incorrect this turn? So far, it looking looking good. Oh dear. Um, all right, I'm going to try and justify that post script because I'm trying to put tackle zones on these elves. So if the ball bobbles, um, then that's why. 
uh, I'm reaching, and and I think, um, I think really that's the wrong way of looking at it. But that's what I did do. Uh, and then I've wedged a Chaos Warrior in there to try and give some more strength to that Beastman. So we've got two tackles under the ball, and it's a little bit challenging for him to deal with. Um, how should we be trying to deal with this? Well, if you can apply one tackle zone somewhere, sorry, you can just apply one at free assist, then he might be able to do something. He's gone, he's gone for the assist, he's gone for the four plus pickup, and he has fluffed it. Okay, so we're now on to the point where it's turn five, sorry, my turn six, um, and actually, actually we might get away with this. Um, safe moves first, so stand up players that are knocked over because we've got no reroll. Um, next thing, look up, see if we can clear the ball. So that blitz means we've cleared off one of the tackle zones. If we don't follow up, we've then got a two dice block there, which means we can clear the other tackle zone. Now the ball is not in any tackle zones for the first time in forever. But we turn over again. Okay, so let's just pause that and, and not let the game pause. Brilliant. Let's just see Hang on. So it is effectively... There we go. There we go. This is effectively the start, the end of my turn. So I... Was there anything else I could have done there? Well, looks that like no one else is in a tackle zone. So did that block do anything? Not really. So I could have argued that there was the mo it wasn't a particularly effective block. Um, but it did not, I did know that whatever I was going to do next was going to turn over. So I suppose you get away with that. But we're into the same same situation. He can two dice block onto the ball to make the ball scatter. And I think for, him, for me, that's what the opening move needs to be for him. He should, be, he should be scattering the ball there, I think. Definitely should be scattering the ball. He is indeed scattering the ball. Um, I'm not sure about the blitz because, oh dear. Yeah, that, that's just gone wrong for him there. We'll just wait until the end of the turn. Okay, does he re-roll this? No. Right. Let the turn tick over. Okay, so this is probably the most interesting turn of all of the turns. Um, just get rid of turn mana. And we need to assess things. So, it's turn seven. If it's turn seven, um, we must have a scoring threat at the end of the heart, at the end of this um turn otherwise we cannot do anything other than either draw, draw or lose the drive uh, the drive luckily because he tried to dodge away an elf and didn't re-roll it um, i have got two free beastmen so one of these two beastmen can go and be a scoring threat well the ball is just ever so slightly off to the right hand side which means that this beastman is probably more relevant than this one so my mind is immediately drawn with a guy that's furthest away that's free let's go and wang him in scoring range so one two three four five six go and be somewhere central so no matter what happens with the ball this turn we can do something the next thing we need to do is player preservation sorry is, is safe moves so let's, let's stand up the players and then our mind then needs to move to can we clear the tackle zones off the ball but this turn we need to clear the tackle zones off the ball in such a way that if we roll really badly um we can still not we don't shoot ourselves in the foot so um we've got a box action here which we could mean that one two three four five blitz for six um even a push is fine that's that's totally legit and fine it moves players out of the way uh, it also means we can then follow up and put a tackle zone on the ball um but it doesn't solve this player here so maybe this guy needs to come and stand here for two dice there because it it's a free move it's a block um, and then it's a blitz there because that means we've got one, two, three, four tackle zones that aren't being touched plus a blitz. So I think that's the play. It also means a Chaos Warrior can then pick up the ball. Um, and if we can get the ball onto a strength four player, he will struggle to get two dice on it. So I think that's my play. Right. So let's make the skate cage a little bit wider, actually. So let's go there. Um, Next action is blitz, sorry, first action, scoring threat. Second action, go there. Third action, blitz there. Um, don't follow up, just stay put. Um, next action is block there. Don't follow that up, and you can block there. And one of those two blocks goes down, the Chaos Warrior is going to be able to walk forward with the ball. 
And I think that's how I'm that's how I'm doing it. So the anatomy of the turn there is safe moves, um, and then thinking about what happens if this thing goes wrong. What happens if dot dot dot. Okay, so that does mean that I can't blitz with the uh, pick up the ball with the Chaos Warrior. I think it's a little bit gambly, because I would much rather hold the ball on a strength four thing than a strength three thing. And if this goes wrong, the back end of my cage is uh, screwed. Oh look, it went wrong. <laughs> yeah, that that's that was definitely wrong. And do you know what? When I watch this play, when I watch this in the real time, um, for those of you who didn't watch the Twitch stream, um, I yeah I did think I was being devilishly unlucky, and I guess yeah you know, in a large part I was being pretty unlucky. But um, there are things that you can do to improve your play, and if people want to have a takeaway from this, um, then one of the things they should be able to take away is do you know what? There is things you can do to improve your play. I bet you there's things you can go away and look at in your own games now that are better that you could make yourself be a better player right so because we gave ourselves the chance of a score although we've got no re-rolls um, what have we got so we've got um, we need a 3 plus pickup we need um, if let's say one of these 3 players goes and fetches the ball so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 we need a 3 plus throw and a 3 plus catch and a 2 plus um, go for it that's the minimum we need, and we do actually need to throw a one in nine block first. So, um, just the just the D six dice rolls. That's probably about a twenty percent play, probably twenty nine, maybe something like that, um, without a re roll. Um, and then we need to factor in a block as well. So you probably are looking at about about a twenty percent, which means that we need to consider covering the ball off, um, and we need to cover as many blocks as possible on the ball, so that if this goes wrong. Uh, we don't completely shoot ourselves in the foot. So that's what that play there is. That's gone cover the witch elf. So can we pick the ball up? Yes, we can. It's a three plus. Um, can a Podiopsis throw it um, to the waiting Gajice? Yes, he can. And Gajice can catch it. Can we go for it? Yes, he can. So I think overall that half, we were lucky. Um, we were unlucky. And... I thought we played to more of our outs than we actually played to, so I've got a personal thing I can take away, which is I am not playing as optimally as I should be on stream, possibly due to distractions, um, possibly due to time variance, I don't know. Um, but I'm not playing as, as carefully as I should be, so if I want to play this team to its full potential, I need to pay attention more. So, right, next is going to be the turn eight block. Um, he is playing Dark Elves, and he is potentially able to one-turn us. So I am just going to try and just shut out a little bit of a one-turn. Not the greatest. Um, it'll be semi-effective, because I've gone wide enough to make it difficult for him. Um, at the same time, I've tried to stay defensive and not give away um, you know, blindingly obvious two dice blocks. They are there, and it's turn eight, and I'm not going to get to move and reply, but um, it's a compromise. It also will do excuse me, for next drive, when it's his turn, um, this this looks okay. So he's not even setting up for the one turn. He's setting up mostly for a blitz. Bit of a reasonable thing to play for, I suppose. Gets a quick snap. Um, so he then needs to revert to, to smashing the Chaos Warriors and the chops. Which is going to be tricky. Three strength, four things. Um, where you can only get one dice at the start. Is tricky to deal with. So he's going to blitz here. Which elf goes and fetches ball. Throws ball for a vanity pass. Which is completely reasonable to do now. Not in Blood Bowl 2020 of course. In Blood Bowl 2020 vanity passing is largely going to be um, turned off. Unless of course you're a thrower. You're not going to be able to vanity pass in the same way Blood Bowl 2020. So it'll be very interesting to see what they've done to the rest of the skill trees. And how the level up um, mechanics work. Because... Um, vanity passes are actually a key thing for elves at the moment, so that would suggest that maybe the level up mechanics have moved. Anyway, so right, we're on. Still got we still got eleven players. The goal here is to do one of two things. We've got two different outs to hit here. We can either hit out number one, which is he scores uh, in the inside the first four turns, 
Or we can hit out number two, which is he doesn't score at all. Um, as a bonus, we could take the ball off him. But so long as one of those two things happen, he either doesn't score or scores quickly, they are both fine. And in fact, they are both as fine as each other. And if you think that through, it's because if he scores on turn four, we get four turns, we go and score on two, two, one. And that should be completely fine. So my setup is to take advantage of, I don't want you to score because I don't want you to be able to run through. So difficult to break down. That's why I've put the three strength four warriors on the line. Um, and then I've gone for quite a wide defense. So it's difficult for him to break it down. And it's also very difficult for him to get lots of numbers past me. So if he does choose to go and score quickly, then he only has to score quickly because he can't defend the ball. That's the setup. So if you're thinking about how do you set up, think about what your goal is, then go and put some players on the board and then ask yourself, if you were them, how would that play through? Do you think that is the going to make you achieve, make you do the goal, or is that not? And if it's not, move them around. If it is, then you've done your job properly. Now remember, the goal here is to make him score, um, or to put pressure on him so something goes wrong. So what I'm doing now is tagging out players on the uh, on the floor, and then we're going to go and start attacking and putting pressure on this. Um, I don't need to steal the ball off him straight away, but I do need to put him under some form of pressure. Um, I also need to be um, careful. There is a witch elf on the on the table, so I can't just leave uh, a, a free surf. So keep them together. We can go and put a warrior in there, which um, makes that beastman a little bit stronger. And if he wants to start throwing blocks here with these these guys, that's actually completely fine because that means these guys are not. Um, then coming forward and being part of a screen. So the rest of this is tag all the players. And if you look at the end of this, this is my end of my turn. Look how many free players he's got to move. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He's got two players, one of which is the ball carrier and one of which has dodge anyway. So he's only got two players to position the rest of his turn. Then you've got two rerolls. You're going to fail a dodge one time in six. So I've just set him up to go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight reasonable that he might use a reroll this turn it's reasonable he might use a reroll next turn well he can only do that twice so by putting him under pressure this is how you make an elf team go go wrong by going and making sure that they have to dodge now it is important that they have to dodge not fight back because if these were all beastmen what he cho might choose to do dodge a couple away blitz them down um, and at the end of your turn you're left with a load of your players on the floor don't do that Make sure that whatever you do, it is not straightforward and easy for him to fight back. Um, just go and make him dodge. But make sure he has to. He can't fight back. So he's doing all his safe moves like we were doing with chaos. He's standing all his players up. Ball carrier moves. And that's going to be difficult to save. So I, in real time, I actually remember thinking. Oh dear, I think he might have made a mistake here because um, I think he's going to leave his two dice on the ball. Yep, and he has indeed left his two dice on the ball. In fact, no effort required whatsoever. Beastman can go and two dice the ball, push him into there. We might even be able to set up another two dice block afterwards using this guy because we can push him into our own player. So I did my free move. Blitz. We get a power. We don't need to go and fish for a second hit. Don't follow it up because I don't want to be back based. Sadly, it fell in the uh, in the one square that I was not looking for. In fact, the two one of the two squares I was looking not looking for. No, one of the four squares I was not looking for. Good God, um, there was loads of squares I wasn't looking for. Never mind. I just I'll edit that out. Um, so if I can go and put lots of pressure on the ball here, we're, we'll be okay. For the one in nine. Um, and what I was looking to do here is I'm just trying to block the Chaos Warriors away so I can get them to go and be somewhere near the ball. Because they may as well be near the ball because they'll be more effective. Again, keeping look what I'm doing, keeping all his players base. And there's another one in there. Um, and I block with the Beastman, not the Warrior, because the Warrior could then have come and stood somewhere around here and be closer to the ball. Then 11, he's in the same predicament he was in last turn. Uh, all his players are based. He's going to struggle to get out of this. Um, he's got a blitz here. He's cleared one of the two tackle zones off. I think I would have probably not followed there. Put the 
Um, Blitzer there. Uh, and then you could potentially have then swung the Witch Elf through here because he's blocked here. Um, as it is, he just casually walks in on a three, uh, dodges out on a three, dodges out on a two, and goes and stands over there holding the ball with the Witch Elf. Um, all is not ruined, however. Um, and he is going to need to make a couple more dodges uh, to make this safe. So if we if we pause for a second, what have we got options? So all we need to do is widen this screen by blocking here or blocking there, and then this warrior can come through. Um, so it shouldn't be too difficult to do this. We just need to think about how we get it so one of these players can get through. There we go. The warrior's gone through. We rolled a double pow. Um, at the time I was thinking, oh god, I rolled my pow too early. Um, we're not going to get a blitz on, on the witch elf, we're not going to roll a pow. Uh, it turns out I was going to roll a one. Um, and then I rolled both down push. So I chose to take the both down here. Um, I think in hindsight that was wrong. Uh, because if you don't break armour, you think about the failure state. So why was it wrong? So you look at your failure state. If you're going to do an action, what is going to happen if it works? Why is it going to how it doesn't work? So if, what was happening if it works? So we get stun. Cool. You can only get a few squares down the field of the, pit, uh, the pitch with these players. And I'm probably going to blitz it. And I'm probably going to be back, back all over him. What if it doesn't work? Well, worst case scenario, the beastman kills himself. Um, but let's just say the beastman doesn't kill himself. Um, and the witch elf doesn't kill herself. So the witch elf is going to stand up and go one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, he's got a reroll. Maybe he goes, go for it. Maybe he goes for it again. So he could, she could be stood there. Well, that beastman definitely can't reach because he's slower than the witch elf. He's further away than the witch elf. So she probably doesn't even need to do that. So it's two plus two plus for one nil. I'm only on one reroll. So I spent two thirds of my resource achieving precisely zero. Um, so that was probably a mistake. Um... In fact, it wasn't probably a mistake. It was a mistake. He rolls a one. And for some bizarre reason, chooses not to re-roll it. That is also a mistake. Because the Witch Elf can be blitzed away from the ball here. So we could run a Chaos Warrior down. We could then block here. We can then blitz with the lying down guy. And we can try and pick up with the Chaos Warrior. So block and follow. Move against the sideline. Blitz here. Oh, excuse me. Because we get it knocked down, I think it's appropriate to pin her against the sideline. And now we can go and pick up the ball. Uh, here, I think it is worth re-rolling if this doesn't work. And this is to stay away from the jump hold. Block there, don't follow. You can cast Warrior free for next turn. Block there. Follow. Keep everyone pinned. And look, he's also... So we've got player pinned, we've got player pinned, we've got player pinned, 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 pinned. Everyone's pinned. And our goal only needs to be to hold the ball until turn 16. Excuse me. We don't actually need to score. We're already winning 1-0. What we must do is not give him the ball back. Um, God, sorry about the ca also camera there being annoying. Um, I don't think there's an awful lot on, on for him here. I think he was trying to do was get players through so we just should, if we can go forward here and we can gain some yardage um if he can get the ball back off us the ball maybe he recovers the ball from over here rather than on the halfway line which means he's got further to travel with it so always take the ball forward um and then also try and think about making the ball completely bulletproof safe so can i put it inside a cage can we be okay so i've managed to make a three-prong cage Blitz here to give myself two more players back. Fine. Follow up on the Chaos Warrior because I think I'd rather have the Chaos Warriors marking players out uh, and the Beastmen then being cage corners. Lock and follow. Not sure about that because if that, that could have been stood up and then you could have had a cage corner um, uh, unlocked. Not so sure about that play. And we then don't throw that because I don't want to push a player into the cage. So I think that, that play was a little bit on the greedy side. Gonna 
struggle to take the ball forward in a meaningful way now because he's managed to tag out three of my four cage corners. Does need to re-roll, that was a little unlucky for him. The Polyopsis is also knocked out. Um, good news, he has used his re-roll. And we've got a Blitz here. And we've now got a problem. It's going to be worth looking at this at the end of the turn to see how we solve this. So the goal, remember, is going to be to try and keep the ball safe. How do we keep the ball safe? Here we go. Right. We know that we know that's turn. And this turn is going to basically decide the outcome of the game. Because if we can make the ball safe this turn, he can't get the ball on his turn 15. He can't go and score. So this turn is absolutely critical. Let's look at the choices. So we've got a re-roll in hand. We can blitz. Um, the, the most obvious play is blitz on the on here because that's it's a 1 in 81 fail. So we've got to roll a 1 in 9, fail it, and roll another 1 in 9. Um, what happens if it does fail? Well, he'll probably be able to bring this guy through and he can get a 1 dice or he could dodge this guy through and get 2 dice. Um, he would also need to solve moving one of these guys down the field. Maybe the witch elf comes down. Um, so that's reasonable. I think we we could we could draw the game on a one percent out. Okay, so we're going to draw the game on a one percent out. Um, can we make it so we draw the game on less than a one percent out? One, two, three, four, five. So we could put a warrior in there. Just by moving this warrior to here, um, we've then got two warriors on on point, um, and we could maybe make a new cage. Maybe. Still do the same blitz, but because you've done a safe move first. Um, you're adding a little bit more security to the cage. Maybe, ultimately, you put the cage Chaos Warrior there. One, two, three, four, five. Because then he is guarding all the squares and he's got to be dealt with before you can then go for the ball. I think maybe that's the right play there. Blitz. Don't blitz with the ball carrier because if you roll a 1 in 81, then that puts the ball on the floor. So do not do that. Um, it's definitely less risky than, um, than the handoff. And it also means we've got three Chaos Warriors to do stuff with. So I think that's the right play. Chaos Warrior there. This guy could then come here, the ball carrier could go in here and we could block there. Um, and all we would need is something to be stood about there. Well, at that point you could throw a one dice there and then that could be a loop. So all you need to do is hit a one in nine, not hit a one in nine, not hit a one in three, game's done. Um, let's see what I actually do. Stand up. No respect paid to the one in 81. I'm playing this far too fast, far too loose. Ball carrier goes flat with this guy, so this guy's not performing any sort of value. And if this goes wrong, we're going to be screwed. Luckily, it does not. However, um, he's got two, so he's got an 11% out because he's got two dice uphill to be able to take um, with block. Um, yeah, that takes it to a 25% out. So we, hit our, we hit our one dice. You can follow this up. This guy needs to come and stand over here. Definitely needs to come and stand over there. Okay, so we're coming around. Oh, I suppose, yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, he definitely needs to come and stand over there. Um, this guy, now he can't go this way around, but he can get through here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We do you need double go for it to stand there? Never mind. Right, so he's got... Oh, good choice. Now, if you watch this uh, on YouTube throughout the whole run, can you just do me a favour and just count up and comment how many times the Jice gets injured, um, knocked out, uh, or generally just doesn't make it to the end of the game? Um, because the Jice is a viewer. He watches every week. Um, but he has the softest jaw in Blood Bowl. So he's, he's looking and setting up for two dice. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two dice uphill. It's got to be that play. There's nothing else to do. Um, he does need to go and put himself a scoring threat in, which he does. Dodge Prox. And this is two dice uphill. This is less good, I suppose, than using the Blitzer. And if you're going to do that and do Frenzy, then you should have put someone here so you can have two dice uphill into one dice. So, fortunately, it doesn't work for him. 
Um, I think he could have optimised that a little bit better. If, he, if he's going to go down that final play, you can optimise that play a little bit better. Um, all we need to do now is blitz on three dice, push this guy away and score. And I think you do score here because he's got one turn, it's 2 0 up, it's game over. We do it in score. Okay, so um, there, there we have it. Now, there's not a lot happens in the rest of the end, so I'm just going to take a moment to uh, just quickly wrap the video up. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you do want to try and get better at Blood Bowl, then come and watch the channel. We've got a load of guide videos. Uh, we stream every Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday evening. Um, also, massive shout out to Grebo Games. They do make some of the best tabletop miniatures out there. Um, they don't pay us to say that. This is off my own bat. This is genuinely what I think. Um, so, if you do like tabletop miniatures, do go and check out Grebo Games. Uh, I will put a link in the channel below um, so you can go and check them out. Um, <clears throat> Also, if you're interested in uh, Blood Bowl 2020 or Blood Bowl 3, do check out this channel because we will be having regular updates over the next couple of weeks, next couple of months on that. Um, and also, finally, if you thought this video was useful and you want to see more, um, then let me know because um, they take a little bit of time to do. Um, and if you guys like them, I'll do some more. If you're not that bothered, I'll just upload the stream games. Um, anyway, I've been Andy Davis. It's been great. Thank you very much for watching uh, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, folks. Uh, and that is actually everything. There we go. Like Disney, isn't it? That is everything. Thank you very much.